line of um, uh, putters, um, the under roll groove technology is what we call them, straight grooves. And the idea behind grooves is just to uh, to make a, a surface on the, well, I, I'll tell you the history behind it, actually. I started with the cavity mallet. Uh, invented the cavity mallet in the early 90s. Did a patent on it, didn't do a very good job, and so I don't have the rights to every cavity mallet. But, um, but anyway, um, what the cavity mallet did is it, it took, uh, it eliminated space, uh, weight in the top, in the center of the putter head. And I didn't even know at the time. I, I did that to be able to pick up a ball. <laughs> I mean, pretty, 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 pretty sophisticated stuff, right? Uh, but uh, when, I, when, I, when I, made, I made the head, I made it out of zinc and, you know, sanded it and ground it and uh, put a shaft in it. And, uh, and then I, I found out that uh, uh, if you have loft on putters, uh, the ball will, will, will come off like a knuckleball. But what happened, I reduced the loft. And the bottom weighting of the cavity created lift so you could get the loft down and the ball would roll better. And I said, well, you know, why don't I just put some something on the face, like some, the first version of sawtooth grooves, straight grooves from heel to toe. And in doing that, uh, it, it did grip the ball. The ball came off the face very nice. And it also softened uh, the feel because it was less contact surface touching the ball. And then after I made a few, uh, so I started making some putters. Um, and I went out on the PG Tour in 2000. And everybody I gave a putter to, um, pretty much all the pros said, I'm not getting it to the hole. Uh, just the ball's not going that far. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it wasn't going as far as the putter they were using, like either a Cameron or a Ping or whatever. In those days, they were going to lose the and, and I said, well, you know, my basic answer to that was hit it harder. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that doesn't always solve the situation. Um, but I did get some guys to, to buy into it, and, uh, and uh, I learned about it as well. But uh, what I figured out, what it was obvious, is that less contact surface means less energy transfer. Uh, you know, when you when you have if 25% if of the face is contact surface and 75% is grooves, it's going to be softer. Not going to be as much energy touch in the ball. So I've known that for years, and um, uh, then I did a recently. I mean, we we, we did the right brand, and uh, we sold it back in 08, no, 10, 2010. And I started a company called Garen Putters. That was my first name, and they had wavy grooves. I think I sent Mark. I said I sent you one one time. So you did well, and you actually won a, a tournament with them. Um, and then that idea was to eliminate, was to use groove technology, but it was a, there were wavy grooves to eliminate the dimple effect on balls. I mean, we're, we're all looking for ways to, to, to put a pitch together for, you know, to make something a putter a little bit better. And while I was doing that, um, this, this uh, the idea of hitting the ball the same distance was sort of emerging again. I mean, originally Bobby Grace, if you, if you remember, had some uh, polymer uh, at a polymer face that he put different chunks of polymer across the face. The middle, I see some heads nodding that you're aware of that, but the centerpiece didn't hit the softer, and the durometer would increase and the polymers to hit it harder away from the center. And that was a polymer solution uh, to do kind of the same thing. And so my goal was to try and take milling grooves, and, and I knew the grooves didn't hit it as far, but I also knew that off-center off -center hits don't go as far. So trying to combine those two ideas, I made the grooves wider in the middle, and that's what, and I'll show, well, we'll maybe pass them around. You probably had a chance to look at them out there. But the wider grooves with a little narrow contact surface in the middle, and then the groove started, if I could just blow up a groove, it tapered down, and, and, and another one next to it tapered as well. And so the space between the grooves got wider and wider and wider and wider as you go away from the center. Well, that, that space, like I learned years ago, hits the ball harder if you have more contact surface. And hits it softer if you have less contact surface. So by taking my uh, uh, robot that I have, I have a, I a robot from uh, a Golfsmith years ago. It was a, it's an Iron Byron. It has a, the top of it cut off and a putter. I mean, it weighs about 90 pounds. I call it three jack. 
and uh, it's, it, it's got a magnet release. It's uh, it's really sturdy and it's really it's a really good robot. And it's not flimsy at all, so I can get some pretty accurate stuff out of it. And I took some uh, golf balls and spun them and found about three out of a dozen that are really kind of similar um, in terms of testing. And I spun them to find the center of mass so that getting rid of the variables, so the balls would roll through. And uh, then I had you know, magnet release on the robot, and I had a, the roll board that I have here. It's a velvet board that shows how the ball rolls. And I did everything I could to make everything consistent, and, and, uh, consistent across the uh, for the for the testing, and then uh, started testing. And when I got this idea, my gear and stuff was continuing to go. But um, Dennis Paulson helped me a little bit, and we just talked about it on XM Radio and TPC. Right there, um, I realized that you know, miss hits. If you can correct the miss hit. You've done something, and that's what the goal was. And so, by increasing the context there, I got them all to go the same distance. Um, but at first, as I said, at first they went further. I backed, the, I backed these little V off. I backed it down, and, and it still went a little further and still crossed. And then I backed it down even more to where we are now, and the balls ended up touching each other and going the same distance. And that was like, okay, this is cool. All right, so now, now we've got something to, to, um, to put together. So I just, I came up with some, um, I did a lot of testing, I filmed it, had people like Dennis Paulson and friends come and help me, and they, Dennis would like put a, put a, a, a thing of ball, a ball uh, cap to, a, I mean, a box top of a dozen balls, he could put them over the top of the balls at 25 feet. And it was, and, it went, and so that was a guy that's, you know, he's a tour player, and, and he, he uh, he was pretty pretty amazed by it, and so for me, I knew I had something that I had to really go for. So what I did is I came up with some nice designs, just low hanging fruit, um, you know, answer style blade. Uh, I, I did another answer style blade with a fatter, shorter version. That's the ER2, and then I did the uh, uh, I did a mallet, um, which was just kind of a uh, the, the the popular looks like a saber tooth, uh, you know, like a tooth, but the, 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 the I think it's Odyssey Seven. Or, well, that's really popular. Everybody's doing that, so I just did that. You know, to get a nice design, and then I did, um, and then I did a kind of a, a unique high MOI thing, which is the ER, the red and black one. I'll explain to you in a minute. And that one was the one that I did to uh, to kind of have something different in the line. So those are the four putters we started with, and called it Even Roll. Uh, and I, I was a marketing and uh, um, uh, designer, design firm, so I came up with this E, which represents E represents the uh, the putter, and the three lines represent the three even rolls. And so I got an E, and so now we have. And you got to have a lot of packaging today. In, in today's world, you know, you go out there, you have to. The product has to look good. It has to work. It has to have a story. It has to have uh, technology uh, alignment. Um, uh, production has to be efficient. Uh, you have to have your messaging together. It's, you, you got this. You can't get away with a one-trick pony anymore. I mean, you can't just do. Heel toe waiting or a site of some kind of graphics for, for alignment. So anyway, I put all this together and I, uh, with a with a partner that I have, and a guy that's come on as mine. He's he's over in China, and uh, he makes the head covers and the bags, and he runs the business, and and, uh, and I just create all the problems and uh, <laughs> and try and solve them. And uh, and we're out. On, we're just now launching out on tour and uh, getting tour players out there. We. One of the other, how many of you know about my golf spy, but that was kind of our first little uh, blow up. Uh, I, 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 I was going to send stuff to Adam um, Berkeley, is the real name. Uh, he's the owner, and, uh, and you know, we want to support that type of uh, agnostic testing that they do. And uh, so I was going to send uh, a putter or some putters to him and they let his forum guys comment on it and just kind of get some awareness out there. We were looking at other social media platforms. And, and, um, and Adam had this idea, this is like in the summer of 2015, right after we had launched, after our first trade show, and he said, he said uh, why, don't, uh, why don't you just, we still got our testers here from there, they do a blade and a mallet test every year, and they had the winners, and he said, we'll just test your four putters against the winners. And I went to Steve and I said, I don't know if that's a good idea. I mean, that could be really bad or really good. It's kind of no middle ground on that one, right? And uh, so um, I, I, we decided, what the heck, let's just be honest, let's go for it. And, 
he tested them, and, and in the late summer, he called and said, uh, got the results, and he rattled on and on, and I finally just said, tell me. And he said, uh, he said, well, you uh, you placed first, second, third, and fourth. And the winners of the thing were you know, fifth and sixth. <coughs> it was kind of an open thing. It was like, wow. I uh, said, so are you kidding? He says, you want us to kind of publish that? I said, no, don't, don't publish this. I mean, we'll, we'll be slammed. And they've got about 700,000 people who follow that site. I mean, it, it's a, and it's a, and they're all nerds. I mean, they're all just all nerds. <laughs>